help, Jim? <laughs> This is the life, isn't it? Not too shabby. Ooh. I think we're moved in now. I think we're moved in. Maggie, we're are we moved in? Yeah. Three, two, one, action. It was a chilly 19 degrees in Elk City, Oklahoma this morning. I have no words that are nice. <laughs> it's cold here. Hey, we got a, uh, an email from some good friends of ours, Marty and Sue. And um, they said, hey, we've got a couple extra days. We're going to try to do a couple of nights in quartzite, but we don't have any idea what the process is to stay in quartzite. So we were talking and said, you know what? We never have done a video wow. on how to do quartzite. That's right. And it's such an awesome place to go. So here we go. Yep. So quartzite is a um, small town on Interstate 10 in Arizona, right next to the California line. And it is, I-10 runs from Phoenix to LA. It has been estimated that over a million RVers One show, up, million. show up in the area <laughs> in the month of January. Why do so many RVers show up in Quartzsite in January? Well, one of them is the tent show. The tent show, the RV show. Mm -hmm. And the other is the Bureau of Land Management or BLM land access in the area. So there is a process to stay on the BLM land. And if you are thinking of going camping on BLM land, we're gonna give you a few tips on how to go about that. Quartzite is a love-hate relationship. Yeah, you either love it or hate it. Yep. It's my happy place. It is our happy place. I love it there. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it's a busy little place, huh? Yeah, it is. This, I like this. <laughs> this makes me happy. So the RV show in Quartzite is not really an RV show. There are a few dealers that bring a few models, some travel trailers, some fifth wheels, a few motor homes, but it's not a real big Tampa-esque or yeah. anything like that. It's, it's a very small RV show. The draw is the tent show. They put up this big, huge circus tent on the grounds, and they bring in vendors, and you like to describe it as? Like going to a state fair. Yeah. And you can go into those, in, into the rooms, and there's booths all over the place. They sell jewelry, they sell eyeglass cleaning supplies, um, RV, everything, everything you could think of. RV they supplies, they sell, they sell solar panels, they sell lithium batteries. Flags, flag flags. Flags, hitches. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's just lots and lots and lots of vendors in the tent show, and there's a lot for RVers there. Um, and that's what a lot of people come to see while they're there in Quartzsite. So whenever anybody talks about Quartzsite, they're thinking about BLM land and boondocking. But you don't have to boondock when you go to Quartzsite. The town of Quartzsite has many, many, many RV parks, full hookup RV parks. I will warn you though, they do raise their rates in the month of January because so many people come to visit. So expect some higher than normal rates when you go in the month of January. They drop back down again in February and March and by April, you're probably going to want to get out of there anyway. Yes, it'll be really warm. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing to do in Quartzsite is obviously boondock. And when we say boondock, we mean camping with no hookups. And the Bureau of Land Management has a 
huge area there that you can boondock at. And some are free and some are fee-based. And we'll talk about them both. The first thing to talk about is the free area. They have, the, the BLM has thousands and thousands and thousands of acres in the area. You can be as isolated as you want or you can be in groups of people, either or. And we like groups of people. Absolutely. We stayed at one of the free areas last year called Plumosa Road and it's about five and a half miles north of the town of Quartzsite. It is a free area, but you do have to register. So as you pull off of Highway 95 and get on Plumosa Road, on the south side of Plumosa Road is a volunteer ranger station. And you need to stop in there and register with the volunteer. You fill out a form and then the volunteer puts the date that you must vacate the area, again, 14 days. So you just register and then you go down Plumosa Road and you look and try to figure out where you want to stay. Right, right. It's tons of room. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's all, I mean, it varies. You can be right next to the highway or you can pull off five miles into the distance and, and just be by yourself. Right. It, it just really doesn't matter. That's the free area. And the reason it's free is they don't offer any amenities. So you will need to go in with empty tanks, full fresh water, and full LP, and be ready to carry your garbage out. That's right. What's nice about Quartzsite is they have a city landfill that you can take your garbage to, and it runs like a well-oiled machine. You go in there, you stay in line, and toss your garbage, and out you go. Yeah, and for your dumping your tanks and your fresh water and propane services, there is a place in town called the RV Pit Stop. That's a one-stop shop, I tell you, and they, uh, they are also a well-oiled machine. You are in there and you are out. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Yeah, you can, they've got four propane filling stations. You just stand in line and they wave you on to bring mm -hmm. you in and fill up your tank and it's very reasonably priced. Uh, the dump station, there is a fee. I don't know what it is, but you can check their website. It's the RV Pit Stop in Quartzsite. Um, so you can dump there for a fee. You can fill your fresh water tank there for a fee. Um, but, it, I mean, they've got it down. They've been there for years and years and years and, and they've got it all figured out. Yeah. The other type of BLM camping in the area is what they call the LTVA or Long Term Visitor Area. And the LTVAs are fee-based because they do offer amenities. So they offer uh, dump stations on site. They offer fresh water stations on site. Uh, they offer garbage dumpsters to throw your trash out. You know, it's not going to be, you're going to have to hook up and, and go to the dump station. You don't have hookups and you don't have a, <laughs> you, you don't have a 220 current bush sitting there that you can plug into. <laughs> but it is very convenient and for that they do charge a fee. And the fee is fairly reasonable in our opinion. You can stay, you have to buy a permit to go in and they give you a sticker for your RV and they give you a sticker for your tow vehicle. And that sticker, if you pay $40, that allows you to stay 14 days. You can stay another 14 days if you wish um, by just paying another $40. And you can continue to do that. Or you can go off somewhere and come back and pay another 14 for another two weeks. Or you can buy what they call their season permit. And the season runs from September 15th to April 15th every year. And that, this seasonal permit costs $180. And it gives you access to all the LTVAs in the area through the whole seven month period. So. As an example, let's just say you wanted to stay at La Posa South, and so you buy your, your seasonal pass, you go in, you stay two, three, four weeks, whatever, and you decide, okay, I'm tired of this place, I want to go somewhere else. You can go down to Imperial Dam, where they have another LTVA, and stay there with the same sticker. And then if you get tired of that, you come back to La Posa South, or you can go to one of the others. There are seven LTVAs in the southwestern 
Arizona and southeastern California area, and you can come and go as you please during that whole seven month period for the $180 fee. You can purchase your permits at the welcome centers at the LTVAs. As an example, the Plamosa South LTVA has a volunteer station as you pull in. You don't have to stop coming in and out, uh, but if you want to pur purchase your permit there, you can pull in, pull off to the side, go in, make your purchase, either your $40 purchase or $180 purchase. They give you your permits, you put them on your RV, and then you go find a place to stay. You can also pick up the permit at BLM offices. We picked up ours last year at the Yuma BLM office right. in Yuma, in Yuma, Arizona itself. So there's a multitude of ways that you can pick up your permit. Just know that there's the free area and then there is the permit area. The permit area has two types of permits, 14 days for $40 or seven months for $180. We really like the, the, the full season permit because it allows us to come and go as we please. It gives us the amenities, it gives us our fresh water, it gives us our, our sewer dump, and it gives us access to the dumpsters for our garbage. So let's talk about how you select your site at either area, whether it be the free area or the LTVA area. Selection is the same process, right? Right. If you have the luxury of having a, a tow vehicle, it's really a good idea to drive that through to see what area you might like without having to bring your whole rig through and not know if you're going to fit in the little gully washers or not. But you can stay on the side of the road as you're coming in. You can go as far back as you want, but that's our recommendation is to go slow, look to see what you where you can fit and if you have a tow vehicle use that first that is the best yeah yeah the the access off of plumosa road and off of the ltva area roads are are really good yeah but as you get further in you can as kelly says the gully washers or the washes you know you can drop down in them and and they can be kind of deep and there can be rocks so just understand that it's not a four-wheel drive trail but it is interesting yeah. at times and you want to select your site carefully take your time take your time because those things come up fast and you're looking like nope I can't do that yeah you can stay by yourself or you can stay with a group of people last year when we stayed at Plamosa Road the free area we had 22 YouTube channels right all staying together we were a big one big happy family that's right and we had subscribers that stayed there also yep so it and we had plenty of room yep it was a lot of fun and we put a big bonfire in the middle we circled all the RVs and we put a big bonfire a couple of big bonfires in the middle and just had a great time yeah it was fun so you can camp with a group uh, what a lot of people do is they will look for similar interests that they have in groups for example uh, Grand Design has a couple of groups that stay in the Quartzite area. Um, we stayed across the road from the Bluebird Bus Group last year. Yes, yeah. Um, Tiffin Class A Motorhomes had a group that, oh my gosh, there must have been 300 Class A's that were all camped together and they were lined up like they were in an RV lot, weren't yes, they? Yes, it did look like an RV lot. Oh, it was man. crazy. Yeah. Never seen that many like that. So you can stay with a group or you can stay by yourself. You yeah. can get out and get away from everybody and just be completely isolated by yourself uh, and not have anybody else near you. No, that's nice. But that brings up some etiquette. So yes. as, as you pull in, as you hunt for a site, you don't want to be parked 10 feet or 20 feet away from somebody else. Everybody's out there for their own space and they like their space. so. You know, use some common sense, give them some etiquette, don't park right next to somebody, give right. them plenty. There's so there's, much land out yeah, there. Yeah, there's so much space. There's no reason for you to have to park that close. Yeah. Also coming with etiquette is as you boondock, so you're not going to have hookups, obviously. You're not going to have electric, so you're going to have to live off of your batteries or you're going to have to live off of solar or both or live off of your generator. Right. There are a lot of generators out there. If you don't have solar, don't think you can't go out there because there are a lot of RVs with generators. Absolutely, and don't be afraid to use it during the day. It's just 
good etiquette that you don't use it all night long yeah. so people can sleep. Yeah, most everybody shuts them down between 8 and 10 p.m. And, yeah. you know, just to be polite to their neighbors and they're not running their generator all night long. But right. there are a lot of generators out there. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the other things we'd like to mention is when Papa Drew came out and met us out there at... Uh, at the uh, free area last year, he was very, very concerned. Being from California, in his mind, when we said desert, he thought sand. Yeah, like sand dunes and yeah. And it's not. No, it's not. It's rock. Yeah. And we didn't sink. It's no, very solid. Sink. Yeah, very yeah. solid. Easy, easy roads. Right. Easy, easy to stay in. One thing you need to look for when you are in the desert out there is that amongst the rocks that you're walking on. They're these little purplish colored cactuses. You can't really see them if you don't look for them. But for the, your dogs, your cats, whatever, whoever's out there, it can get stuck in their paws. So really be careful. It's not everywhere, but there's a certain section that has more. So that's just an FYI if you were, you know, for your babies. Yep. So as we said, Quartzsite is our happy place. We're making it a yearly tradition. Um, if you stuck around for this video this long, you probably have been following us for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna give you a little update here on our travels. We were planning on being in Quartzsite for New Year's with Jones and the Travel, Aaron and Tina and Maggie. That's not gonna happen. So then we kind of pushed it, said, okay, we'll be there by the 14th of January and meet up with a bunch of side-by-side -side riders and we'll all have a good time. We're not even sure that's going to happen. Right. We got word yesterday, again, COVID strikes again. Our coach is delayed again. And we're at the mercy of the... Whoever we're... Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's either a toilet or cupboards or... I mean, awnings. Awnings. It, it could be anything because of the shutdown that was shut down for so long, everybody's just trying to scramble to get back to where they need to be. Yeah, so DRV has done their part. They have manufactured the coach. Mm -hmm. uh, last we heard, it was sitting at Moride getting the uh, independent suspension aligned and, and installed correctly. And uh, then it's still got to go to paint. And we just learned yesterday that the paint shop that they use was down 18 bodies. <laughs> So we're a little disappointed. No, we're very disappointed. We are very disappointed and sad, but this is a really good learning thing for us that we need to be patient, that it's out of our control, and the Lord has us here for a reason. Yep. So we just we just need to hunker down and be great grateful that we have a place to be. Yep. And it's with Lee Shin Slade and the guys. So we're good. So Chad and Jen, uh, we had really good intentions to be there by the 14th but we can't uh, we're a 50 50 at this point and yeah. we'll know more hopefully by the first of next week but uh i don't know if we're going to make it by then or not we sold our can-am trailer yeah. so we can't even hook it up to the back of ours and go down there and just come back yeah so we're kind of we're kind of here for a while unfortunately yeah. when we got here to oklahoma we thought okay we're done double towing for right. life and so right. we put the can-am trailer up on craigslist and it was gone in six hours yes it was so, needless to say, we don't have a trailer to double tow the Can-Am. We're waiting on our toy hauler to put the Can-Am in and haul it off. We will make it to Quartzsite. We just don't know just when don't know yet. When. Yeah. So Donna and, and Dave <laughs> will be there. Tina and Aaron. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, it, we're just not sure when. We'll keep everybody posted. Right. So, anyway, if you've got any questions on the Quartzsite BLM areas or the LTVAs, feel free to send us an email. We're happy to answer your questions. That brings up, again, we'll talk about Facebook and Instagram. Some of you have been messing, messaging us on Facebook and Instagram, and, and that's great. We'll get to it when we can, but we don't have push notifications on our phone for either one of them. But we can guarantee you guys that we will get your emails yeah. through our website. Yeah. We check our email on our website at least once a day, if not two or three times a day. So we'll get back to you with an email. Um, Facebook and Instagram, they may sit there for three or four or five days, guys. It just yeah. depends on when we can get to them. I'm so sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's we're not doing it on purpose. No. It's just emails are easier. Yeah. All right, so that kind of sums everything up. So if you've got any questions on the courtside area or the BLM process, uh, please feel free to send us an email. Uh, we're not experts, but we have been there. We have done it. Yeah. And we're very confident that we can provide good information to you. Yeah. We hope to see you out there at Quartzsite this spring. And in the meantime, from Elk City, Oklahoma. It all starts with an idea. Thanks for coming along, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.